G'day guys, Mac with the Outer Circle, and in today's episode, we are going to look at the Thousand Suns and trying to fix the Legion, because they've got a lot of problems. Now, before we get started, I put up a poll, which quite a few people have already voted upon, uh, just asking the question for the next sort of critical takedown video, do we want to look at the Horus Heresy novel series, or do we want to look at the relationship between 3D printing and Games Workshop heading into the future, because I have quite a few thoughts on that that I want to express. Anyway, on with this show. So, before I get started here, this lovely army in the background was painted up by Warmaster Painting. Uh, I hope he doesn't mind me using a picture of his army, but it's absolutely gorgeous, and I just wanted to use it. So, <laughs> uh, anyway. So, the Thousand Suns Legion Rules. So their Legion trait, or Cult Arcana, is what it's called. And all infantry and cavalry, except for artillery and automated artillery, are psychers. Now, independent characters that don't have a psychic discipline can take one for 15 points a model. Further, all of the units that do this, uh, that are psychers, they all get to use one of these Cult Arcana, and this is... Raptora, Pyre, Pavoni, Corvidae, or Athenaean. So the Raptora, when ending a move or run in the movement phase and you stop within 12 inches of an enemy, uh, you make a psychic check. And if you pass, then all models of the unit get a 6 pass invulnerable save or improve their invulnerable save by 1 to a maximum of 4 plus. Pyre, when you make a successful charge, roll a psychic check. And if successful, the charging unit gets Hammer of Wrath 2. And that could be pretty useful on, say, large tactical squads, or large despoiler squads, or uh, assault squads. Pavoni. So on Pavoni, in the movement phase, when selecting a unit to move or run, you make a psychic check, and if you're successful, you add plus 3 to the unit's movement. So you can go up to 10 inches on, say, a tactical squad. And you get to ignore movement penalties for difficult terrain. Corvidae, when making a shooting attack, uh, you make a psychic check, and if you're successful, the first wound you cause acts like a precision shot, so you get to allocate it. Now, it's not the first wound that actually an armor save is failed, it's just the first wound you cause. So, not well worded, not very good. Uh, and then the Athenaean, the final one, is when you make a shooting attack, you make a psychic check, and if you're successful, the targeted unit reduce their leadership by one for any pinning or morale checks caused by the shooting attack. So, also got its issues. So, let's break down what are the key issues overall with this. So, firstly, the Legion trait is functionally useless outside of characters, because if your characters die, you lose the ability to gain any benefit from the Legion trait. Okay? This means that unlike literally every other Legion, your trait can be stripped from you. So imagine if you play something like Night Lords, and just you lose your squad sergeant, and now all of a sudden the squad loses a talent for murder. You'd be pretty peeved if you were a Night Lords player, okay? Well, for Thousand Suns, this is how it works. You lose the squad sergeant, you lose the ability to cast your power. Not very good. Further, vehicles and dreadnoughts, things like that, gain absolutely nothing from the Legion trait. There is nothing written into there. So whilst you have, uh, again, my favorite example is always Imperial Fists. They're the one I'll go to because they're what I consider the strongest Legion. Every single unit in the Imperial Fists army gets plus one to hit with all auto and bolt weapons, which is two thirds of the ranged weapons in the game. That's really good. It affects everything. Dreadnoughts, vehicles, the works. Thousand Suns do not have that. Thousand Suns vehicles are identical to the raw vehicle that you purchase for points in the core book. That's it. That's all you get. There is no additional buffs or benefits to being Thousand Suns. My thought is this, that if a psychic test is failed within three inches of the vehicle, then you can instead throw a wound or a hull point onto the Dreadnought or tank from the character or model that failed the psychic check instead of resolving the perils. It's fun, it's fluffy, and it gives you a reason to actually supplement your characters with those units. You know, a Rhino is a lot more useful if you can stick it next to your Praetor, and when the Praetor does do a peril to the warp, he takes a whole point off the Rhino, okay? And you're still paying 35 points for the privilege of not dying instantly to a psychic power. Think of it that way. 
Now, onto the part that suffers the most, and that's the Colts. So the Colts like last edition are time intensive because here you have both a system that <sighs> there's clearly better Colts that people are going to gravitate towards. And there's a really annoying step that must be taken to implement each of these Colts. And it messes with the game pacing in two key ways. Because firstly, you must select what unit is using what Colt and then note it down. And then secondly, you must go through the rigmarole of rolling the check each turn to see if the unit achieves the power and what the consequence is of doing so. Now I have some major issues with this, as the way the Thousand Suns operate is not as homogenous cults working in large groups, but rather as squads made up of numerous cults which work together to cover one another's weaknesses. So the Diviners, they foresee an ambush coming, right? Then your Telekines, they place a shield around the squad to help fortify and protect them. The Biomancers, they're ready to help heal the wounded. Uh, the Pyromancers, they prepare to attack the enemy and the Telepaths prepare to assault the enemy's mind or steal your own resolve. Therefore, my solution is a D6 roll for any squad that wishes to use a cult, very similar to the old Possessed chart in 6th edition 40k. So you roll a D6 on a 1. The Flesh Change, it takes hold and one wound is taken, allocated to the player's choice within the squad. Only Adamantium Will may be taken as a save against this wound. You roll a two, then Pyre becomes ascendant within the squad and the unit, they get to re-roll once to wound. On a three, Corvide becomes the preeminent psychers within the unit and the unit attacks re-roll once to hit. On a four, it's Pavoni. The unit gains a 6 plus feel no pain or plus 1 to their feel no pain, which does not stack with Heart of the Legion. On a 5, Raptora. The unit gets a 6 plus invulnerable save or plus 1 to their existing invulnerable save up to a maximum of 3 plus. And on a 6, Athenaean. The unit increases their leadership by plus one to a maximum of ten and gains the stubborn special rule because your your resolve is being fortified. Let's move on to the advanced reaction. Fortress of the Mind. So, once per battle, when targeted by a shooting attack but before armor saves are made, make a psychic check. If it's successful, then the reacting unit gets a three plus invulnerable save. If the check is failed, then you go to a 5 plus invulnerable save and both the attacking and reacting units suffer perils of the warp. It's a really, really weird advanced reaction. You have other legions like Ultramarines, okay, who I modelled my revised version after, who just go, oh, you shot me, advanced reaction, I get to shoot you with the unit you shot at, plus I get to pick any other unit in my army to shoot back at you with. That's really, really strong. But for Thousand Suns, it's you get a slightly improved invulnerable save on something like Sekhmet Terminators. Eh? Yeah, and the penalty? Oh, you have to take a psychic check, which means if it's a low leadership unit like Tactical Marines, there's a 1 in 3 chance you're going to fail. That's not good. Uh, and if you blow up the squad sergeant, yeah, you, you might get the power for a turn, but then you have no sergeant and you don't have anything for the rest of the game. It's not a good reaction. They've got the whole, there should be drawbacks to using psychic powers down pat, but I think the writers just don't use psychers enough, and they think that they just go off without a hitch every game and dominate the battlefield. They most certainly do not. Uh, even in Heresy 2, the Thousand Suns' greatest strength is psychic HQ choices because they get to use the proper powers from the main rulebook. So my solution here is the advanced reaction should be more similar to that Ultramarine's advanced reaction, where another unit assists in the return fire. And my thinking is that your Thousand Suns unit psychically calls another Thousand Suns unit to help. Therefore, it will read as follows. Once per battle, in the shooting phase, when an enemy unit shoots one of your Thousand Suns units, you can decide to have the target make a psychic test, so the target of the shooting attack. If they pass, both they and another unit may make a reaction shooting attack against the triggering enemy unit. Reacting models must have line of sight and cannot fire indirectly, and vehicles may use any weapons. Obviously, this will not include indirect weapons, not just defensive ones. 
If the psychic test is failed, however, then only the targeted unit may use the return fire reaction. So my thinking is high risk, high reward for all psychic tests. That's why on my D6 table, you have a flesh change on a one. It's one in six chance. Same thing here. You have a chance of a really good advanced reaction for the Legion, but it can go pear shaped and it only turns into a regular reaction, but you've wasted your advanced reaction for the game doing it. Warlord traits. So there are three Warlord traits and I think they're all fine as implemented. Um, the Evoker of Pain, Ma Magister of Prospero and the Idol of Suffering are all good. Therefore, I wouldn't change any of them. I like them as they are presented currently. Then let's go to Unique War Gear. So Ether Fire Weapons. Ether Fire Weapons are a replacement to Plasma Weapons. They essentially, the trade-off is they are weaker with the chance to get stronger. So they don't have rending, which automatically is awful because, well, Plasma already sucks this edition. Um, but when you're using them, if you, you have a K and Force. So a K and Force, as a rule currently implemented, is you roll a Psychic check. If you pass, then you get plus two strength on the weapon. So instead of being strength six, slightly worse plasma guns, they can go to say strength eight. And the idea here is that they're, you know, they can instantly kill Marines who get, you know, a three plus armor save or a two plus armor save against it and don't care. So either fire doesn't really have a niche. They're weaker plasma weapons uh, with the potential for an instant kill, right? And it's only against toughness four units. So I don't think they're a good investment currently, and I'm not really wanting to fix them as many different legions already have crappy plasma knockoffs. So my one suggestion here would really just be to add armor bane to them if you pass the psychic test on top of the Achaea force, just to represent that the psychic power is amplifying the actual weapon's damage output to make them, you know, kind of useful. Maybe you can kill dreadnoughts with them, they'll find a new niche. Asphic shells. So this is a special ammo type for bolt guns. And of course, you've got to look at wording here. So it's bolters, not combi bolters, not combi weapons, not bolt guns with bayonets. I know rules is written, guys. They don't think these things through because it would be so overpowered to have a bolt gun with the shred ability that also had a bayonet. Um, you just physically can't make it work. So... <laughs> <laughs> that was sarcasm. Uh, now, what happens? You lose about a quarter of the range on the weapon when you have this ability. Okay, It gives you shred on bolt gun rounds. And I like them. Um, there's, f I think, four different weapons this actually applies to. Uh, and it's a bit of fun. Actually, it might be three weapons. It's four for the Aether Fire. So, Asphyx, they're in a pretty good place. I think they're a fair trade-off in comparison to the original variant of the weapons. Um, but I would say that as an option, any vehicle which has a heavy bolter should be able to swap it for an Asphyx bolt cannon. Five points on top of the cost of the heavy bolter per vehicle, I think is perfectly fair. It's a much weaker version of an assault cannon, basically, without the rending. You're just getting a strength six heavy bolter, which rerolls to wound. I don't think it's that overpowered. Then of course, the Kea Pattern Force Weapons. So this is one that they've created for this edition. There was no special rules for Thousand Suns Force Weapons in the last one. Characters can replace their power weapons with weaker force weapons, okay? And that is what a K and Force Weapons are. They don't double the strength of the model using it when they, you pass your Psyche check. They give you plus two strength. This is not great okay because well for a start independent characters can't take them which is stupid um i don't know why because independent characters it makes the most sense to have them but instead they're walking around with the regular war gear while your squad sergeants have force weapons but the big problem with the chaos pattern force weapons well there's numerous issues for a start they don't count as psychic weapons for the units which are affected by psychic weapons such as corrupted unit type okay I really want to change the weapon as it functions currently because it's either an axe or a sword or it's a mace. I think it should function as an axe or a sword because it's based off the Kopesh blade. And the Kopesh blade, the famous Egyptian curved sword, 
It's a sword, yes, but the special thing about that sword is the shape of it allows it to be very good at actually doing chops, not just taking slices or performing thrusts like other swords do. The curved, very uh, large, heavy blade that they can have, great chopping implement. So why not go for something like the White Scars had in the last edition, where their glaives could be used as power axes or power swords? Do that here. Count them as you can use it as an axe or a sword in addition to that force ability. And of course, for clarification, if something is affected by a psychic weapon, these count as psychic weapons when activated for the purposes of that special rule. Also, there should be a version for characters, and I think we should call it the Achaea Paragon Blade. Functions exactly the same as a normal Paragon Blade. But if you pass your psychic test, rather than increasing in strength, it improves the murderous strike of the weapon. So just throwing ideas out here, but keen to hear your feedback. All right, onto the rights of war. So there's two rights of war, the Achaean configuration first. This is the Castellax Achaea right of war. So the uh, Castellax battle automata of the Thousand Suns. They become a non-compulsory troops choice in the right of war. If a friendly unit suffers perils within 12 inches of the Castellax, you can allocate wounds to the Castellax. Uh, Castellax Automata count as line, but only when they're within 6 inches of a friendly Psyker. And this, by the way, the FAQ clarifies, cannot be another Castellax Achaea, because they technically have the Psyker rule. Uh, limitations now. Castellax Achaea, when they're taken as troops, must be more than one model in the squad. And detachments must include at least one Tech Marine Covenant for the sake of repairs, and the detachment must include a Pravian Console. Now, nowhere in there does it say in the Achaean configuration based around the Castellax Achaea that you need to take Castellax Achaea. Just isn't that a bit of dumbassery? So let's keep that in the back of our mind. Now, the right of war is let down by the fact that the Castellacs are not scoring by default. If you have to babysit them with psychers to become line, then you're more inflexible because now you're tying up other units to babysit the Castellacs, which is just silly. Do you want to have a tactical squad that's already line sitting there beside a couple of squads of Castellacs to make sure that they don't go rogue or that they can hold objectives? In which case, well, the tactical squad can hold objectives and not go rogue. It's a silly design choice. You have legions, okay, like the Imperial Fists. And Imperial Fists have three rights of war. They can make elite units compulsory troops choices, give them wine, give them heart of the legion and other bonuses. So if they can have it, why can't this legion? The Castellax Achaea should be compulsory troops choices, and you should be forced to take two units of them as your compulsory troops choices. Because as written, you don't need to, which is silly with this right of war. It's like how the Emperor's children could take the Maru Scarra right of war, and that right of war gives them plus one movement for their entire army until they bring a reserve on. Nobody says you have to have a unit in reserves and that you must bring reserves on, though. So the Emperor's children can just take that right of war, put no one into reserves, and they gain the benefits of the White Scars Legion trait for free. <laughs> like, it's just silly, okay? So let's avoid that here. You should be forced to take Castellax in the Castellax right of war. So if Castellax, okay, are troops, and let's face it, they should have line. If they're better stat-wise, We'll cover that shortly, then there needs to be some other limitation placed upon them for balance. So my limitation would be that for every Castellax Achaea unit wiped out, the opponent gains an additional victory point, and if all Castellax Achaea are killed, then they gain an additional two victory points on top of killing each unit of Castellax. I'd say it can only be taken as a primary detachment as well. The next right of war is the Guard of the Crimson King. So the current benefits are that when you take this, you get to pick six units. They must be infantry, by the way. You're not deep striking, I don't know, dreadnoughts or something silly. And on the turn they deep strike in, they gain fear one. Also, you can take segment as troops. Uh, they are not scoring, they are not line, any of that. And your limitations is you must take Magnus the Red, Azigaraman, or any old Praetor 
who's upgraded to a Psyker to run the Rite of War. Which, I don't know, it's... it's if any old Psyker is taking it, is it really the Guard of the Crimson King at that point? I mean, you could understand it for Araman being, you know, the Chief Librarian of the Legion and yada yada, but eh. Uh, and you can't take it as an allied detachment, so... fine. It's a mostly solid right of war, but I think it's too close to a vanilla Thousand Suns force. Very, very, very minimal buffs in there. It's just the one-trick pony of the sixth unit deep strike. So I think as a right of war, you should be first encouraged to take Magnus's bodyguard, the segment. So let's make them line so they're actually scoring. And as a limitation, they should be forced to be your compulsory troops choices. Simple. Same as the Castellax Achaea, you know, actually force them to be used in the right of war that focuses on them, maybe? Alright, so getting into the special units, let's keep on with the uh, segment who we've just covered and talk about their abilities. So segment are your standard Cataphracty Bodyguard Terminators, Weapon Skill 5, and they have a Minor Psychic Discipline, one of the Cults, which obviously is going to be replaced by my Far Superior D6 Table. And you can upgrade the Squad Sergeant to take a real Psychic Power, the same as the characters can. So, what are the problems here? Well, Segment Terminators come with Achaea Force Weapons, and as we've already gone over, they're just Power Weapons, uh, and you're paying 50 points a model for the privilege of it. This is far, far too high. Uh, do remember, yes, you can turn the Squad Sergeant into a Psyker, but you pay additional points for that again. And... You've already got the Legion trait, so what are you paying all these points for? You are very limited on your war gear and such, so I really just think the big problem with Sekma here is drop the points on them. Okay, they don't do anything so well that they deserve to be the same points as something like, uh, I don't know, Justerian Dominator Cohort are cheaper, I think, and they're all armed with like Thunder Hammers and have Hatred. Like, yeah. You need to be equivalent to other units in other legions when it comes to fulfilling that certain niche. So segment, drop the points. I'd say down to about 40 to 45 points. Definitely not 50 points for what they are. Then we get to the Contemptor Assyrian. So the Contemptor Assyrian is the Psychic Contemptor Dreadnought. And you are forced to take it with the Gravis Force Blade, no pun intended. Which is Strength 9 AP 2 and Brutal 2. Okay, so it is worse than a Contemptor's Gravis Power Fist. But the trade-off is, you can cast that Achaean Force ability on it, and get plus 2 strength for a really bizarre strength of 11, which no one ever asked for. So, I suppose you can kill Toughness 5, which is something like Custodes, but, well, you've got other problems with fighting them, because your weapon skill 5, their weapon skill 5, and you can as a Nemesis units, they're going to hit you on what, threes, if not better, depending, uh, and you're going to hit them on fours, and mm, yeah, the maths is not great, you're going to probably die, but you'll take a few with you, so, you know, it's something. So, with this model, yeah, you're forced to take that Gravis Force Blade, and you come with a Gravis Bolt Cannon base. I would not give it the option of it can take different ranged weapons. The only other close combat weapon it can take is another force weapon for some dumb reason, instead of just a regular Gravis Power Fist or a Chain Fist, which would give it an actual niche to fulfill. So my thought here is force it to take the actual Thousand Suns War Gear, a Twin Asphyx Bolt Cannon in place of the Gravis Bolt Cannon, which would be way more thematic. Uh, and let's lock in the war gear options for it uh, so that an Ether Fire Magna Cannon is the other option. So you have a really strong uh, set of thematic options there that are not so overpowered that people are going to be annoyed at you for taking it, but they're not so underpowered for the amount of points you're paying where you feel like you're on the losing end every time you take the model out. It should sit nicely in the middle. As for its weapon, Strength 9 with a Psychic Test to make it 11, let's try something else. How about, if you don't use the ability, it just functions as a normal Gravis Power Fist with the worst Brutal, okay? Strength 9, Brutal 2, AP 2. Let's rewrite the weapon to be more higher risk, uh, higher reward. 
So instead of that ability, when you activate a KF Force, instead of going for a strength 9 to 11, how about it becomes Murderous Strike 4 plus? Then it becomes a terrifying weapon, especially against other Dreadnoughts, other monstrous creatures and such. That's probably the route I would head down. So those are my three solutions on the Assyrian. Thousand Suns themed weapons for its guns instead of, oh, you can take an auto cannon. Just it's such a low tech weapon on such a high end psychic dreadnought just seems wrong to me. And yeah, Strength 11 is just such a stupid strength. Just give it Murderous Strike 4 Plus. It achieves the same function as Strength 11, realistically, which is you can instant kill things. Um, but the, the risk is if you pass um, the psychic check, it works well. And if you fail it, you're probably going to blow up your dreadnought. So Castellex, Achaea, Automata are up next. They come with an Aether Fire Cannon. They get a couple of Asphyx Bolt Guns and two Achaea Force Cores, which are essentially similar to Power Fists. Um, it can also fire all of its weapons like a Dreadnought can, fire everything in one turn. It ignores difficult, dangerous terrain, yes, but it kind of sucks. If there is a Thousand Sun Psyche within 12 inches, the Psyche can use it as a point from which they generate a Psychic Weapon ability. So if you want to do a shooting Psychic Attack, you can, like Aetheric Lightning for example, you could do it using the Castle Exakea as the casting point. It can have its bonuses. Now, where do you begin here? It's a weapon skill 3 unit in a game where the weapon skill was adjusted in such a way that one difference in weapon skill is two difference on the dice roll. That is huge and unfair. Okay, So you go up against basic marines with your 140 point Castlax Achaea, you need fives to hit with your two attacks. Two attacks. It's horrid. Absolutely horrid. So, in my mind, let's take it a step further. Let's just make them weapon skill 2. Make them total trash tier. They're mindless, dumb automata, right? They need a psyche nearby to control them. So, let's foreshadow what the Thousand Suns' own future is as dusty automatons themselves. How about when you're in the presence of a psyker, they get better, increasing their weapon skill up to 4. That would actually be something unique, something cool about the unit. So that's what I think you would need to do with them. Castle like Sakaya. And also, I don't think that the babysitter should be too close to them. I think 12 inch bubble, eh, I think 18 is a fair bubble. Okay, something similar to what Mechanicum can get with their, um, with their different controller options like Cortex controllers. So 18 inch bubble, you shouldn't have to keep the Psyker right next to the Castellax for them to function normally. Alright, the Kenatai Occult Cabal. I think these really do suffer in the current edition. You've got dual wielding a K of four swords, okay? And that's it. That's all they can ever use is these four swords. Yes, you can give them the crappy version of plasma pistols that the Thousand Suns have access to. Why spend an extra, you know, five or ten points per model, whatever it is? It adds, it's, it adds so many extra points that you're never going to make back, okay? They get this special power that replaces their minor arcana. And if you pull off your psychic check, in theory, it's really good. It gives you plus one movement, plus one weapon skill, plus one attacks. Problem is, you cannot attach an independent character to the squad and use it because you must be composed entirely of models with the Mind Song of Blades special rule. Which is like, well, you want to attach a chaplain to them because the unit is so good and you want those rerolls to get on the charge because, you know, this is an elite murder squad. So the issue here is that you have a unit that they have to be on their own to use the power, and even if they pull it off, they're still using just power swords. So let's take a look at something kind of equivalent. Let's look at one of the weaker Elite Legion units, the Templar Brethren. Now, everyone will agree they are not the top tier in Elite units in 30k. Right? That's going to go to something like Invictus Suzerain, or, well, it'll probably go to a Terminator unit, like the Huskals, or the Dominator Cohort, or the Deliverers. Something like that is the top tier. But out of power armor, 
I'd say that the Templar Brethren are definitely on the weaker end of things, okay? But they too have power swords, but they can make up for, you know, having power swords a little bit because they've got combat shields and they've got artificer armor, and they also have furious charge, which actually makes up a bit of the ground of the Thousand Sons of Chaos Force weapons. And the Imperial Fist Templar Brethren, they can take Solarite Gauntlet, they can take a Thunder Hammer on the squad leader as well, and they can get Melter Bombs on the whole unit. The Thousand Sons can only get Melter Bombs on the squad sergeant. And here's the kicker, the Templars, with all of that, cost just a single point more than the Kenotype Blader Colt. So how the hell, like, Artificer Armor alone is 10 points a model. So how are they the same points? Is it because the Thousand Sons get Mind Song of Blades? The power sucks, so either way something has to give here. You cannot have a unit that is clearly designed to kill other elite units, because that's the whole point of the Kenatai, but is unable to hurt them, okay, and also cannot take punishment in return. So the fluff for the unit is also really odd here because it says the armor is not just artificer made, but it's actually made by master psychotech marines who psychically form the armor in a similar fashion to something like how the Eldar grew Wraithbone, okay? They don't physically piece it together with their hands, they psychically mold it in the air. Really cool fluff. Does not translate to generic power armor in my book though. So fixing the unit starts with a Kayan force weapon changes that I mentioned earlier, so it can be used as an axe or a sword, and it ends with adding artificer armor to the squad. It really is that simple. And the cost? I think because they're going to have the Mind Song of Blades, as well as a Cult Arcana, they deserve both, the cost should go up by 6 points per model to adjust for the improvement. Now we get into an old one out here, and that is the Numerology Cabal. This is from the Exemplary Battles PDF, and this unit is craptacular. It's a psychic tech marine called the Numerologist, who's accompanied by 5-10 to 10 man Despoiler Squad. And he has an Achaean Force Axe, and the way the squad's designed to work is similar to the Deathwing Companions. The Despoilers here, they are designed as ablative armor for the Tech Marine. Precision shots and strikes targeting the unit cannot target the Tech Marine. Always has to remove one of those Companions first. The Numerologist, he can take a Cyber Familiar. Uh, he can also take, he obviously got his Servo Arm, things like that. So it's encouraging you to hang around in the rear and use this ability to repair vehicles. And on top of that, his special psychic power is he can give up to two units within six inches plus one ballistic skill when he casts his psychic power, which is a poor man master of signals. But he's in a unit armed with chain swords and bolt pistols. So a ranged unit designed to sit in the back lines, repair your vehicles, is armed with all close combat war gear. Nothing about this unit makes sense. It was written by a madman. So the unit sucks and has no job role. I said it, sue me, I don't care. The point is that any new unit added to this game, any unit added to a force in general, needs to bring something new and unique to the table that complements the rest of the army, that fills a gap. This is why the recent Blood Angels unit is no good. They don't do anything that the Dawnbreaker cohort didn't already do. And we have the same thing here, because Tech Marines already do the same job. And you get multiple of them for a single slot choice. And they're not a great threat, Tech Marines. Nobody targets them. So why does it need a 10-man bodyguard that precision strikes don't hurt? It's just so bizarre. The no precision wounds bodyguard themselves being only armed for close combat is just... Why? The only saving grace here is that it's an elite slot and the superior Master Signals is a HQ slot. Now remember, the Master Signals not only can buff a squad with plus on ballistic skill, but he can pass on the leadership of him or the squad he has joined to another unit in your army. So you generally will take him, put him in a high leadership squad, and then use that ability to pass that high leadership to someone else. It's a very, very good ability. This guy doesn't do that. Now, that said, Elites is also a very hotly contested slot because you have many, many good available uh, units to Marines there. You have what, Contemptors, Rapiers, Terminators, Veterans, Apothecaries, and you want to throw away one of those slots for a single Tech Marine and a Despoiler squad that cannot score. No, you 
course you don't want to do that. It's silly. So how do you fix it? In my perfect world, you wouldn't. You'd replace it with an entirely new unit that actually does something unique. But if I have to keep this unit in the spirit it's designed with, I'd make the numerologist into a master of the forge, aka a proper HQ stat line, with the unique power, as well as a normal psychic power. Additionally, his squad would be 5 to 10 legion heavy support marines who must be armed with ether fire versions of the plasma cannon. And they should lose the silly no precision shots rule. They're just regular space marines, they're not diving on the bullet to save the president here. His unique power would be that he gives a buff to himself for his battlesmith ability, so that it works on a 2 plus rather than some weird silly pseudo master of signals ability on a tech marine like don't cross the streams okay now the last unit in the thousand suns we need to look at today is the amatara occult intercession cabal stupid name and not well written unit from the legacies of the age of darkness pdf so these guys are psychic scouts in scout armor they get shrouded six plus they're relentless they get nemesis bolt guns they have a silly unique power that gives them rending 4 plus and ignores cover um there's a problem here so you know how they're shrouded scouts right this means that being shrouded scouts ballistic skill 5 they're pretty much the same as more day than thing is though more day than have all of this same equipment plus an ability that works without having to pass a psychic test they also have power armor which is you know better uh, and they can take actually useful war gear, like everyone can take Volk Heights. Th three strength five rending four plus shots from more day than is a hell of a lot more scary than, well, this unit, because these clowns have rending four plus at the risk of failing their leadership eight psychic check on weapons that have rending five plus already. What the hell is the point of the unit? Oh, well, you know, they ignore cover. Cover is crap this edition. It is, it's not the 3 plus cover you would commonly see in the last edition, you know? If you've got 5 plus cover, you're doing well in Heresy 2. So, why is that? Like, the tax here is just, it makes no sense, okay? Yeah, there are things you can do, like you could attach a HQ to this squad, and whatever weapon that HQ has is going to get that 4 plus rending. What, one shot from an Architect pistol or something? No, it's, don't bother, okay? This squad was good in Old Heresy, but it, it's outshone by any competition in Heresy 2.0, especially if you're trying to make a ability that makes them kill things harder, when there are already similar types of units in both the Elf Legion and the Raven Guard, and even the White Scars in a way, um, except they do theirs with Lightning Cores in close combat. Um, when other units already exist that have these killing powers and they don't have to pass some hokey test that'll blow up the sergeant to do it, well, these guys can't compete with that. So let's not go down doing more damage route, okay? Let's go down the ability to, if they pass a psychic test, they gain shrouded 3+. plus. It's fluffy, it's simple, it suits snipers and recon units, and it is not going to break the game. A 3 plus armor save is not the end of the world. It's a really good damage mitigation role, that 3 plus shrouded but they are still 4 plus regular armor. So it's a 4 up, then a 3 up. And it's a risky strategy to do because you're only leadership 8 if you're going to try and pull it off. Other than that, you're basically a sniper squad with better ballistic skill, you know? And you'll do just fine. You've got Nemesis bolt guns. You can snipe out the apothecaries and sergeants from the other army. Anyway, that's it. That's me. That's what I would do to try and fix the Thousand Suns in Heresy 2.0. So again, for those who don't understand the problem, let's summarize it straight off the bat. Almost all of the elite units are priced 10 points more than an equivalent unit in another legion for the privilege of using a psychic power. Most of the time, the psychic power is no good on the unit. In addition to this, the basic army must use a cult power. The problem is, is the cult power is the only legion buff that you get, and it is tied directly to whether your sergeant lives or dies. If your sergeant dies in the squad, or the squad leader dies, then the entire squad loses the ability to use their legion trait for the rest of the game. This is in marked contrast to every single other legion in the Horus Heresy game. Therefore, it is badly implemented. 
There are other minor problems, like how other legions have no penalty to using something like their legion advanced reaction. They just declare it, they use it, and it's done. The Thousand Suns, on the other hand, must perform a risky test in order to get theirs, and the trade-off for the risky test is poor. Additionally, the Thousand Suns' unique equipment is not very good. Their unique equipment is designed to function a certain way. They have all the downsides of being psychers, but no positives to actually draw from them when it comes to utilizing things like their weapons, war gear, and to some extent their abilities. Lastly, because of the way the cult system was implemented in the Thousand Suns, the Thousand Suns suffer from having to make a billion dice rolls during the game, and the player has to decide what certain abilities each unit is going to do each turn. This slows down the gameplay and it makes the army a bit of a chore at times to play. So my recommendation is turning it from taking a psychic check on different cults that you must decide prior to the start of the game to a simple d6 table system where it's high risk, high reward. Roll a one, bad thing happens, you're probably going to lose a model. Two plus, you're going to get some sort of buff that is universal and works across the whole army. And also, with the changes to that cult system, vehicles and dreadnoughts can now act as essentially ablative wounds for psychers who fail their psychic tests. So there you go, that's the way I would change and fix the Thousand Suns. The whole reason I had to write this in the first place, I believe, is because the people who wrote these rules generally don't play Thousand Suns. You don't see a lot of Thousand Suns models, you don't hear much about psychic powers in use, I mean, they haven't even designed uh, and presented us with a librarian model in the Horus Heresy, and it's been 10 years. There was, of course, that limited edition Cataphracti Librarian Terminator, but you can only get him from going to a Forge World specific event. So we don't really count that. Plus, he was summoning a blood, blood letter out of his hand. That can't be healthy. Now, because they don't play Psychus regularly, they don't understand how Psychic Army works. I think the perception of many people is that, hey, you're a Psyker. Uh, especially Thousand Suns were really good last edition, therefore you must be really strong this edition. And to an extent this is true, Psychic Powers can turn a game. Psychic Powers can be incredibly strong, especially when employed on independent characters. The problem is scalability. Once you have filled all three Thousand Suns characters uh, in your HQ slot with proper Psychic Powers, you've essentially maxed out your Psychic Power allocation. Yes, there are additional ones you might be able to put in on, say, an Assyrian Dreadnought or on a Sekhmet Cabal Squad Leader. This is true. But for all intents and purposes, you max out very early on. And this means that in low points games, you're going to see the biggest benefit of having those Psychic Powers. A thousand point game with 3000 Suns HQs all rocking Psychic Powers, they can be absolutely devastating. However, once you start getting up to 2000, 3000 points and more, you're going to find that the actual impact of those psychic powers is greatly negated by the fact that other armies have legion traits that apply army-wide and that they just simply overpower the limited abilities of your HQs as a Thousand Suns player. So these are all things I had to keep in mind when I created this video. So please understand, this doesn't come from you know the typical place of salt that people like to raise. This comes from a place of genuine concern as a person who has played Thousand Suns since the mid-1990s. I think I know pretty damn well how to play them as a legion across every edition. And I get a lot of feedback from other Thousand Suns players, people who are very good at playing Thousand Suns and have a lot of passion for them. So I'm pretty damn confident in my feedback that I give. So Forge World or Games Workshop or whoever is looking after them now, take the advice on board, fix the Legion. They are in a terrible place right now because you have other Legions. Like I said, the Imperial Fists are one I go to all the time. Legion-wide bonus, every single model in their army, be it tank, dreadnought, or infantry, plus one to hit with all bolt and auto weapons, which is two thirds of the ranged weapons in the game currently versus the Thousand Suns. Situational bonuses on squad sergeants, and nothing on vehicles, nothing on dreadnoughts, limited bonuses on characters who can't even take Legion-specific war gear. You can really tell where the priorities lie in the original writing. Let's step away from that. Let's improve this army. Let's FAQ it as well. I think a very, very simple improvement that can be implemented straight away to help fix the Thousand Suns is two things. First, Independent characters should be able to take a K of Force weapons. They may not be very good as currently implemented, but at least it would be fluffy. It would be fun, and it would be very suitable to the Thousand Suns. 
The second change that should be implemented immediately is all Achaea Force weapons and Aether Fire weapons should count as psychic weapons for the purpose of unit rules that are affected by psychic weapons. So think things like units who have the corrupted unit type and take uh, instant death from psychic weapons. They should be terrified of the Thousand Suns. That needs to be their niche to be fulfilled. Because my opinion is that in the current game, the best psychers are the word bearers by a country mile. And I would say the second best psychers are actually the White Scars. Because the way that they've implemented Storm Seers, they're really good. They've got some cool, unique abilities. And the particular uh, Storm Seer elite unit in the uh, exemplary battles the White Scars got is also a pretty cool unit that actually brings something to the table that these guys do not. So that's it. That's me. I'm back with the Outer Circle. I'm sorry for taking up 45 minutes of your time, but I hope you got something out of this and I hope you understand why I felt this video had to be made. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.